The PlayStation 5 is finally here, which means excitement for a whole new generation of games. Now maybe you're set and ready to go to get a brand new PlayStation 5, or maybe you're just considering it. Well, you're probably wondering about the games, so today we're going to take a look at the top 12 best upcoming games coming to the PlayStation 5 during the launch window. Now do keep in mind that I'm focusing on games releasing early in the PlayStation 5 lifecycle, so we aren't looking at games coming in late 2021 and beyond. These are all games that are currently being planned for release within the first six months or so. Also, as always, this is only my opinion, and maybe you're excited for other games too. And if that is the case, let me know in the comments below. With that said, let's get right into the video. To start off this list, I have Sackboy A Big Adventure. Now, this is a game that I really wanted to see Sony bring back to the PlayStation 5, so I'm really glad to see this one though it is a bit different than its predecessors. This is not a 2D platformer anymore, but instead it's taking the lovable world of Sackboy and putting it into a 3D adventure. I actually like this idea a lot, though unfortunately it's not being developed by Media Molecule. Instead it's being handled by Sumo Digital, the same studio behind Little Big Planet 3. Little Big Planet 3, while not being the most praised game in the franchise, I do think it was good in its own right. Sumo Digital clearly understands the Little Big Planet world, and as long as they can put out a game without any kind of technical issues, I think that this could be a great launch title for the entire family. Next up, I have Oddworld Soulstorm, a remake of the PlayStation Classic Oddworld Exodus, and a sequel to New and Tasty. Now, these games have always been kind of odd, as the name implies, but they're also very unique experiences that has been remembered for decades. For good reason too. The story itself is actually very memorable and kind of dark, and then the gameplay itself is challenging with its action-based platforming. What's really cool to see though is in how much bigger this game looks. I've always been a fan of remakes, but Soulstorm looks to be the biggest odd world yet, and that is very exciting for this one-of-a-kind franchise. Now Godfall is a very interesting game. It looks kind of similar to Destiny, but with swords. That can be both a good thing and a bad thing. For fans of Destiny and games like that, Godfall is absolutely a game that you need to pay attention to. On the other hand, fans who are a little tired of these looter type games may want to take a hard pass on Godfall, but I do think the combat looks like an overall fun experience. It's fast and frantic, and I like the idea of making a melee based looter style game. It's also designed around cooperative gameplay, and not many games are doing that early in the generation. So right at launch, the PlayStation 5 may end up having a really fun cooperative experience that you can play with your friends. When it comes to big AAA games with rich open worlds and interesting plots, Far Cry has been among the top of its class. And with Far Cry 6, it looks like it's going to take things a step further, especially with the acting. Somehow they have managed to get Juan Carlo Esposito, most well known for Gus Fring from Breaking Bad, to take on the role of the main villain for Far Cry 6. Now Far Cry is no stranger of having electrifying and charismatic villains such as Voss, so we know Ubisoft knows how to make a good villain, but I expect the acting to be phenomenal in Far Cry 6, and with the technology of the PlayStation 5 and facial animations being better than ever, this will absolutely be a game to look out for. Ubisoft has always experimented with the Assassin's Creed franchise by putting players in entirely different locations and eras, and now Assassin's Creed Valhalla will be heading to one of the more interesting historical eras, the Vikings. With their brutal fighting style and close bond of living, this may make for both fun RPG gameplay and an interesting story. Now Valhalla does seem more similar to Odyssey than some of the other entries in the franchise, but if you like rich RPG games, then Valhalla might be the game for you. I was absolutely blown away the first time I saw Kena Bridge of Spirits. While many gamers look to more photorealistic games when talking about graphics, Kena's Pixar-like art style is stunning to watch in motion. This to me right now may very possibly be the best looking game on the PlayStation 5 from a visual perspective. Not only do the cutscenes look beautiful, but the gameplay does as well. The colors are vibrant, the character design is great, and it just looks like it has an overall interesting world. If anything, 
I think that this game may end up surprising a lot of people when it releases as long as the gameplay is even half as good as the stunning visuals. It may be Sonic's 30th anniversary next year, and I'm sure there will be a lot of Sonic to look forward to, but Sonic fans might also want to keep an eye on Balan Wonderworld. See, Balan Wonderworld is a game created by the original Sonic creators, and you can really tell with the art style and gameplay here. It's got a very similar charming design to its characters, and I think fans of 3D platformers are going to be in for a real treat here. It is an action 3D platformer, but what's interesting is the various amount of gameplay mechanics. Instead of just having a few abilities, you will have a plethora of costumes to change your character and all of their abilities, which should definitely keep Balan Wonderworld from getting too stale. I know one thing though, I am very excited for this game, and right now it's one of my most anticipated games for next generation. Insomniac Spider-Man game is debatably the best Spider-Man we have ever seen, in both movies and games alike. It was an insanely good game, both in terms of its story and gameplay. Really, I think the story itself doesn't get nearly enough credit for how good it actually is, because I don't think I've witnessed a more engaging Spider-Man story, though I'm sure some will disagree with me on that. Nonetheless, it is a very good game, and Miles Morales seems to be following suit. While it's not necessarily the big sequel many were hoping for, and it is smaller in scope, it does have the same stylus combat to it, and even adds new elements with Miles Morales having slightly different powers than Spider-Man. This should make for a very interesting combat system, but that's the thing. Insomniac does a brilliant job with the combat in pretty much all of their games. They always have a ton of gadgets to make things fun, and it's not just stylish, but it's also fluid. So again, even though this game is a bit smaller in scope, I do expect another great Spider-Man experience that will be different thanks to Miles Morales' new powers. Call of Duty is one of the biggest franchises in the entire industry, and it's really been that way since Call of Duty 4. This is in large part thanks to its fast and addictive competitive multiplayer, and luckily Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War will be available for the PlayStation 5 right out of the gate. Even better, it will be in 4K resolution and run up to 120 frames per second. Yeah, that's right, 120 frames per second is a thing for the PlayStation 5. Call of Duty has always been interesting though, in the sense that they do offer compelling stories that the fanbase enjoys. But Activision has dismissed this component in some of their past titles. Well, good news here because Call of Duty will have a campaign, and I think that's something that fans should be very excited for. So whether you want to play multiplayer or single player, Cold War is the entire package. And to top it off, it will be a good game to test out that 120 frames per second mode. Demon's Souls was one of my favorite PlayStation 3 games, and it really started off the Soulsborne genre. So yeah, I was very happy when they announced a Demon's Souls remake. And the fact it's a launch game has me absolutely thrilled. This is actually the game I'm looking forward to the most for the PlayStation 5, but with that said, I am concerned about the animations in this game. It seems like it doesn't have much weight or impact to the animations, and even when your character blocks, it doesn't seem like anything is hitting you. That does concern me, but from a visual standpoint, Demon's Souls looks gorgeous. Bluepoint, once again, is making a very good looking remake, so hopefully by the time Demon's Souls releases, those animations will be fixed up even if it is a day one patch. The original was amazing, so hopefully the remake is just as good. Resident Evil has had a big generation with huge games like Resident Evil 7, 2, and 3. Well, the good news here is that we're not going to have to wait very long for the next big Resident Evil game as Resident Evil 8 will be coming to the PlayStation 5 in early 2021. Now this game does look a bit different than previous games in the franchise, and you even have a werewolf-like creature hunting you down. It's also a first-person game in the same vein as Resident Evil 7. In fact, you do play as the same character from 7, but I don't think that's a bad thing. While many fans do prefer the third-person Resident Evil games, I thought Resident Evil 7 was a fantastic game in its own right, and hopefully Capcom continues their hot streak with the eighth installment. And number one on this list goes to none other than Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. 
This really goes to show you that Sony made a great decision acquiring Insomniac Games as they already have two great looking games coming to the PlayStation 5 very early on in its life cycle. And I have to say, Rift Apart looks insane. It has the same gameplay that you love in the Ratchet & Clank franchise, but this is the one game that really seems to be taking advantage of those ultra high speeds of the PlayStation 5 solid state drive. It's almost seamless in how you transport to different dimensions in the blink of an eye with no slowdown in gameplay. This is a creative way to use the solid state drive in an actual gameplay experience. It does go to show you that you can use a solid state drive beyond just load times, and I think Rift Apart will be a showcase for this very early on for the PlayStation 5. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if I missed any game that you're looking forward to, let me know in the comments below. With that said, if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.